My name is Crystal. If you are a returning subscriber, hey, let's forehead kiss. Mwah. All right, um, it is 8.30 in the morning and, oh yeah, if you have loved watching these videos, you can go over to my Patreon and there, you know, if you want, you get me some coffee and in return, you get to see a whole bunch of videos that aren't on YouTube. One of our sisters, um, she wrote me and she was like, Crystal, you know, like, thank you so much for your channel. Uh, she said that she had been watching my videos and the reason why she started watching my videos is because she went out on a date and she ended up, um, stuff happened during the date that she didn't want to have happen. And afterwards, you know, she was like, I need to find some way to feel safe again because I don't feel safe. And so she found my channel and she took some jujitsu classes and she realized she was just, she was like, Crystal, like I could have fought him off and defended myself. All I needed to do was force the open guard. So basically go from closed guard to open guard and keep him away with her feet on his hips and do some up kicks. She's like, if I would have known that, she's like, it's almost like she had a, a power inside of her, like a superpower that she had no idea existed. That's just such like a beautiful story of like the type of community um, that we're building on this channel, you know, to have someone like her feel close enough to me and us to, sh to share that is like, kind of giving me goosebumps right now. So it's amazing like the inner power that we have that sometimes we don't realize. And that brings me to a very interesting point. I just finished reading this book. It was so good that I read it in like five days. <laughs> By this woman right here, she is a Holocaust survivor and she has her PhD um, in psychology and the whole book is about her life before the Holocaust, surviving the Holocaust, and most importantly, like healing the trauma afterward and then how she healed other people and how her patients helped her heal. She's still alive and she works with the army and the navy. You know, anybody that's gone to war, you know, you're probably feeling pretty fucking angry. <laughs> There's this one um, psychologist and this was actually before, back in like 19, I think it was like 1950, um, before there were any like laws against the rights of animals, he did a an experiment and he delivered, he put a dog inside of a cage and taught the dog that if it pulled like a lever, it would be able to alleviate shocks being delivered to the dog. So the dogs that knew that there was a, a way to fight back and escape, once they were getting shocked, knew exactly, pull the lever and they were able to escape. The dogs who were never shown how to pull the lever, when they were shocked and even presented with the lever, never thought to pull the lever. So that's the difference between not knowing that you're able to fight and knowing that you're able to fight. Like in you is that lever like all along, but it's so hard if you've never practiced like the art of fighting to know what you're capable of. I'll show these videos of me like going up against other skilled, these are skilled people. These aren't unskilled people. So if a woman, if a skilled woman can be a skilled man, divide that, right, to the, a common denominator so an unskilled woman can be an unskilled man. To win is to put up a level of fight that's higher than th they're willing to fight and to know that you can fight for a dur long duration of period of time and you're not scared of what that process looks like because if you've never fought before it's very it's it's more challenging than if you've had time in the gym when i first started jujitsu i was like <gasps> But what if it escalates? Like what, what? Cause in my subconscious brain, movies and media basically always told me that because I was a woman, I 
I wouldn't be able to fight. The damsel in distress, the, the, the Cinderella, the Rapunzel, they're always getting saved, not by themselves, but by a man. By that logic, I was like, oh my God. Deductive reasoning tells me that if a man decides to attack me, like what, what does that mean? So there's this like learned helplessness from some of these stories we were told as children that made me think like, would I be able to fight somebody off? But then after learning jujitsu, I realized, oh, pff, yeah, I would. <laughs> you can't predict what's going to happen, but at least you can go in with that lever, with the confidence, with that inner power of knowing what you're capable of. For example, let's say a man and a woman are out. The woman knows the dude, which is the typical scenario. Um, maybe they're in college, you know, they're at a party, things start happening and she doesn't want it to happen. Um, so winning in this insta instance is to be able to have the confidence to fight um, and to be able to fight the mm, going in the mm. And I don't know, like, even if it's not a struggle, it's kind of hard to get that aim just right. You know what I'm saying? So you just... You just have to have a level of fight that is either like a boner killer, which I watch my Tinder dating video for some funny things on that. On that. Some people think of like being able to defend yourself as like, yeah, you know, you choke them out, you break all our arms, which is great. Yes, you're gonna have to get some skill for that. Even as like a beginner white belt, and you're starting to roll and you're getting accustomed to the feeling of somebody physically fighting you, they're on top of you, it's hot, it's sweaty, and you're just fighting from the bottom, that in itself is self-defense training because you're putting yourself in that scenario. Like that is the value of it, all right? So let me just preface that. So if you want to join this family, go ahead and press the subscribe button. We have very strong sisters and we have brothers that are also pretty badass as well. So come and join this family, um, especially if you don't care for your real family. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> it's the holidays. <laughs> I love my family. All right, I love my family. All right, no, all right. I'm kidding, mom, you know I love you. All right. <laughs> Through life, shit happens. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And like, there's always some sort of healing that needs to happen, whether that be like emotional or physical. If you're in jujitsu, you probably know you're gonna get, <laughs> I'm not gonna put that on you. I've, I've sustained some injuries in jujitsu that, you know, even required physical healing, which is a process. All right, let's, this is a good roll. You're gonna laugh. We're gonna have some laughs during this roll because this, this one's funny, all right. Here I am going up against Hamza. I tell Hamza I'm probably going to be chill because I'm getting over an injury and he is happy about that because, you know, he's a white belt going up against a blue belt and now he actually has a chance. We touch hands and get to it. Hamza comes in and is trying to go for a setup for a Kimura because he knows I am injured and therefore is trying to attack my weak point, weak point as you should. I take this instance to travel around to north-south and then to a side control. One thing I want you to, and he tries to escape but then I push his leg down. You are using their force and transferring it into another direction. So that is the value of knowing how to, let's say, do the walk around drill. Um, so right now I am going for a submission while also moving around. And now I am in the Kesa Katami side control. So you can see the value of learning how to do Kesa Katami, how to slide your knee. So right now my knee is trying to find its way across his belly, but he's doing a very good job of blocking and trying to escape. So in order to counteract this, I then transition to north-south, grab his arm in a Kimura grip, and then now I'm going to take my leg over his knee to try to gain the back position. And we have an audience who wanted to run in and see the attack. I then switch to a a triangle body lock. This is 
<laughs> extremely horrible if you're in it and if you're the one applying it then i definitely recommend that you arch your back because it basically causes a separation feeling and it is absolutely horrible it feels like your guts are being squeezed Hamza is now going in. Now, do you see what he's trying to do right here? He just put his hooks in, meaning his feet, into my inner thighs. So what he's trying to do is he's trying to go in for butterfly hooks and he's trying to scoot his butt in to go for a sweep. And now in order to do that, he needs one underhook. If you are ever in a position um, where you have somebody trying to get in butterfly hooks and they are also trying to get an underhook, if they just need one underhook in order to sweep you so for fight for your life to not give them to not let them get underneath your armpit because once they do then they can set up and like <laughs> and like, like a typical white belt i mean he's just going for it so it's very easy to defend if you are going straight for what you want um, one thing that's really great is to have two moves that pair up that way you can go for what you want and then their defense sets up the second move that's just a little insider so see that he's trying to go for the underhook and <laughs> and at the same time i am pinning his knee to the ground in order to set up a pass now all i need to do is get that leg out and he's trying to attack one leg but the value of stepping out <laughs> is great. So he's trying to circle to my back. And now he's trying to go for a sweep. And now he gets me in a guillotine position. And at this point, do you know? And at this point, I am like, my <laughs> scapula area is injured. And when you roll, when you're injured, um, I. I want to keep on training um, even through injuries and so in order to do that what I do is I basically don't try. I like instead of fighting I just go limp and at this moment he's so used to what it feels like to go up against me. Uh, that's one thing when you watch a video the, this invisible force like you can't feel what it feels like. So what he's feeling right now is me not even trying and just going completely limp like I don't really you know, I'm not going to fight and injure myself anymore. And then he just, um, he freaks out and just lets go. And he's like looking at me very confused, like what's going on? And I tell him, hey, look, like I'm literally not going to fight you <laughs> if you get me in anything because like, dude, I'm not going to like injure myself over any bullshit. Um, so after him telling me, I'm telling him of my injury, uh, he's like, all right. Now I'm passing his guard. So controlling the legs and trying to get by them is the name of the game um, for any pass. That's like the core concept and principle. And as I am rotating around in the north-south, um, he tries to capture my head. And at this point, he is going for a fireman's carry so do you see how he, I'm over his body and he tried to throw me in this direction um, this typically is done from standing and if it's done from standing for the love of God never post out with your arm because if you do and you are getting thrown from standing and you post out your arm there is going to be a lot of force because of the increased distance since you're on your feet that goes through your arm and, and you're going to end up getting injured so if you are ever in a fire if somebody's trying to do a fireman's carry throw on you from standing for the love of god just roll through it um in this instance we were on our knees and i knew from the force and, and velocity that i would be able to stop it by posting out my arm and in addition to that notice this hook right here um, anytime that you are in a on somebody's back in this perpendicular fashion where I'm across his back. Um, this hook is also slowing down my momentum and this hook right here um, can set you up to get arm bars and a, a bunch of other good stuff. So I have this arm 
And then what I do is I take my other leg and I put it across his shoulder. And once I am able to get that one arm from that underhook and that other leg across, I now have a triangle. So the rule of thumb is anytime, you can have a triangle from any position, the rule of thumb is you need to get one leg over their shoulder and you need to have the other leg underneath their armpit with the arm that you are using to create the triangle. So one arm in, one arm out. And now he is going for a double leg, like he really means it. And I'm laughing because <laughs> I'm basically teasing and being like, Hamza, this is your time, man. <laughs> you smell blood in the water. I'm injured. Like, now's your time to finally get that double egg. And he finally, he gets the double egg. <laughs> Good for him. You know, you got you to gotta make sure you kick them when they're down and when they are susceptible to being beat and they're weak and injured. That's when you really need to make sure they get submitted. <laughs> So we start again and again do you see what i'm doing that's one thing that you can um you can try in your game is to pin down their knee um, that way you can do a knee you can slide your leg across and you can staple their leg to the ground using your shin um, so that's the same concept that's used for any cut across pass so you can make that cut across happen by stapling their knee to the ground to begin with Now I'm standing up and trying to get my hips in because the fight is him trying to use his legs to push me backward and sweep and me trying to keep my hips in to not let that happen. And right now he is going for a leg attack and I am trying to spin out of it and back step out of it. And he does have something, oh, but my, my foot is right there. So what I'm trying to do is I am trying to keep my weight forward and he was trying to go for an ankle lock. Um, yeah, so that is the end. Thank you so much for watching. And again, during this holiday season, you might find yourself you know, with some extra time on your hands. And I definitely recommend uh, reading this book. It was very helpful. Uh, for me because currently I am recovering from a little knee injury so it and it's always you know we all have something that we're dealing with whether that be like physically or, or mentally um, like every human wants in one way or another you know like approval attention or affection and it's interesting how we subconsciously going go about like getting these things and why we're getting these things and i found for myself you know once i've figured out the key things that were driving me and why i was able to better aid myself <laughs> and help myself um so yeah that's just uh you know it's always useful uh, so yeah, so thank you so much for watching and if you haven't joined this family yet, we welcome you with consensually, preemptively agreed upon hugs. <laughs> Only if you like being touched and want them, you know. <laughs> Alright, so until next time, bye.